Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. This is... Dude, just admit it. You're recycling the reviews we've already done. No. How is it different? This is a bespoke blend of multiple finishes okay. of their rye. Okay. 12 years old. Right. The blend is right here. Right. 40% Madeira finish. Bespoke is just a fancy word for customized. That's right. This was specifically done for Flaviar. Flaviar, you know that website oh, that yeah. well, they got we can't get here because they can't ship alcohol to us. I think they got an app. Yeah. How did we get this? Uh, this was a gift from Marquez Di Napoli. Marquez Di Napoli, you magnificent bastard. Ten percent Sauternes, French Sauternes, thirty percent Sherry, twenty percent Port, forty percent Madeira. Is it pronounced Sauternes or Sauternes? Sauternes. 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 And the new vault pronunciation oh, speaking, is everything. Speaking of, we have not proven ourselves worthy to actually get lights and you know various basic functionality in the ship. So, so we, we improvised like MacGyver. How do you, what do you think about that, Cosmic Bunghole? It's not really the Christmas spirit no. I was looking for. Okay, so the bespoke thing, <sighs> does this have distribution? Is this something Flaviar it means, is promoting? Yes. Okay. So if you have a Flaviar thing you can get shipped, then they this can be one of the things. Oh, right, right. right? Yeah, now we have that's another fun. one we might compare it to oh. that is done for specs. Oh, so, so people in Texas or anywhere there's a specs, they'll get to try a so bespoke these various blend. organizations, mm -hmm. uh, they're either approaching Whistlepig or Whistle Whistlepig is approaching them and saying, hey, here's our lineup. Do you want to do like a customized type right. of blending of our lineup yes. to your specifications? Yes. That's fun. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this smells like just no, candy dessert. Well, and but but that it's uh, rye. Yeah, that rye spice note, less spicy and more sweet and softened, but without mm. losing the character of that spice, it just doesn't go so far where it makes me out of my comfort zone, which is which isn't hard to do with rye. It's very crimson, Christmassy. Is it? Yeah. It's got the Christmas red. Yeah. Old world. Spicy, sweet, you know, combos, some cask, cinnamon, cask some clove. Rye. Get the sherry, the port, the French combo. Whoa! That often used? Well, Sautern is used. There's a couple of others that do Sauternes. I think Glenn Morangy has a Sautern. Okay. Or, um, anyway, there's some other brands that are doing some French Sautern. You taste it. Tasted. It is like drinking perfume that ends with dry rye grain. Not sweet. No. Not sweet. But perfumey. I was I was buckled in for some sweetness on that nose. So if you like a dry rye, this could be right up your alley. It is very dry. Yeah. Uh, it's got to be the 12 years in the barrels. You think the sugars started to fade away while these other... The oak... I think the oak spice uh, brought out all the dryness of the rye grain. That's weird. I'm not sure what to think about it's, that one. It's... Well, I'm going to put it this way. It's dramatic. It's dramatic, but... But... If I'm looking for a ride to go exploring in, you think that's it? Well, I think the mass market palette, they're always going for sweetness, especially in the States. You want something to sell? Mega sweet. This is not, I don't know, if it's on a scale of one to ten of sweetness, I'd say this is like a three. Yeah, it, well, and most whiskeys are rocking like, you know, a seven or an eight. Even the nose is really high. So this one's Madeira, mostly Sauterne, and then a little bit of port. Okay. What I would like to see with this is, what is part of what we're tasting is so turned. What did you just pour here? It's much darker on the nose. Let me do the specs version. Mm -hmm. that... It's missing sherry. This one doesn't have sherry cask. And the Sauternes oh, is turned is, way up on oh, the percentage. 55%. So what we get to okay. see is, what of what we were tasting was Sauternes. I like the specs one a little bit better. Mm -hmm. It's not as a dry on the finish. Yeah, the specs does seem to be a little bit more dialed in towards the middle. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a dry rye spicy adventure, not even spicy adventure, just a dry rye flavor palette, <gasps> it's gonna be that flavor. That gets so much into toasted rye bread at but, the end. But even the Specs one, I wouldn't necessarily categorize it as a sweet whiskey. No, me either, but it's definitely sweeter than, All right, you, than it is dry. While he gets a different glass, we have from Greg Elliott. My question is, with the focus on trying to help myself, learn to distinguish the various flavors. Would it be best to stay with a single bottle of whiskey and simply work my way through that entire bottle as I try to pay attention to the notes, or enjoy a sample from bottle A today, sample of bottle B tomorrow, and so on? I don't know what you're gonna say. I would say jump around from bottle to bottle. 
the comparisons are yes, going to help you give, yeah, help you give that context and that framework of this is going to be more oaky, this is going to be more brown sugar, this is going to be more herbal, all that kind of stuff. Your brain is designed to compare things. It's not very good at standalone analysis. Um, as a matter of fact, when you see people do standalone analysis on a whiskey, they're actually comparing it to historical patterns in their own head. It's not like there's an objective reality in the glass that they're discovering. There's some, there's a note in here that I'm trying to put it's my finger on and so I can't dry. do it. You know what it is? It's, uh, it's dry rye, toasted rye bread. No, I, I made a Reuben sandwich the other day. Mm. And this is tasting like the toasted piece of rye bread I toasted for the sandwich. Okay. Okay, you grill it up with a little butter in there. Mm -hmm. and yeah, bit. but I ate just a piece of the rye bread before I started putting all the sandwich stuff together. Right. And it was just a toasty, dry rye. Okay. Just to see what it tasted like. Moss Garcia. Moss! We've inherited the Whiskey Tribe, my wife and I, and I couldn't be happier with the respect in this group. We recently lost a true magnificent bastard, my father-in-law, about yeah. a month ago, and inherited a quarter of his collection. He had about 120 bottles. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, he, Kevin turned us onto the Whiskey Vault channel before he passed. Mm -hmm. We are now completely hooked. We will try to be regular posters with our ventures. Slancha to the fallen and be Kevin Christensen, the best father-in-law ever. To Kevin, G yes. Magnificent Bastard. This did not turn out to be my favorite rise. No, but I did think it was a worthwhile exploration. I agree. Into what finishes do to a whiskey. Yeah, it does not, yeah, I agree. My mouth is really dry. We should. Cleanse our palate with something. More whiskey! Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us! us.